Russell Westbrook is a big story coming out of last night's game. So for the second straight game, Russ was benched by coach Frank Vogel, and he was subbed out in the third quarter, and he did not return. So here's how Russ reacted to the benching after the loss. Take a listen. I put a lot of work in. I got a lot of respect in this game. I, I, I don't have to hit a benchmark. I shouldn't have to. Um, I earned the right, you know, to be in closing lineups. Numbers will tell you. I don't have to explain that. But like I said, once again, that ain't my decision. That's his decision that he um, and the staff think is best for the game. And unfortunately, just kind of just got to go with it. There's a moment right before the end of the game where you went over to LeBron and AD on the bench. Can, can you kind of take me yeah, through just, what was going, what was going on there? Yeah, just encouragement. Just keep the head up. Keep playing. Tough night. And I told him I wish I could help him. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the game to be able to help them. Um, and that's why I, you know, why I came here to be able to help them out. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that you know, for them, but it's, that's not my call. All right, so I'd like to welcome our insider, Brian Windhorst, to the conversation. So Brian, can the Lakers make it work with Westbrook after what we just heard? You know, the next few days are going to be really important with Russ because taking that position where he's not willing to go along with potentially sitting at the end of close games and maybe at some point even coming off the bench, not even being in the starting lineup, that's going to be a very important thing for the Lakers over the next few days because when you look at the numbers, Russell's referring to his career numbers. His career numbers are awesome. He's a Hall of Famer. But this season's numbers do not support playing him at the end of close games. And even if the eye test doesn't support it, and that's going to be a huge thing for the Lakers to manage in these next few days. Well, and Perk, take a look at these numbers so we can kind of see exactly what Brian is talking about here. You know what? The numbers is fine, but I, I'm, I'm extremely bothered by Russ and those comments after the game. In what um, sense? In, in, in a bad way. For the simple fact that accountability is, is huge, and Russell Westbrook is shying away from that word for some reason. And he can't sit up here and tell, you know, hey, I was brought here to help, but it's out of my hands. No, it's been in your hands. You just haven't delivered. And you know what's weird to me mm. is that they have a guy over there by the name of Phil Handy, Coach Phil Handy, arguably the best workout guy, uh, the uh, developmental guy in the NBA. And for some reason, Russell Westbrook just won't give Phil Handy a chance. And every night I'm watching his game struggle. And so the problem that I have is, is that you can't come on here and blame Coach Frank Vogel because Coach Frank Vogel then stuck with you long enough. He's tolerated. He's had your back in multiple interviews saying, Russ will be fine. We got to get our chemistry. Sooner or later, I mean, he got to figure it out. He has to put the best players on the floor at the time that he think could win the game. And right now, Russell Westbrook is not in that conversation. What Russell Westbrook needs to do is the, get the trust back of not only his coaches, but his players. Because we just saw in the video, LeBron and AD weren't trying to hear that. <laughs> They're like, no, nah, dog, you got to pick your game up. They was not trying to hear that. They didn't tell them that, but they wasn't trying to hear that. Look at it. They're not trying to hear that. No, I agree. And when I saw that, I saw a player that was not necessarily involved based on the reality. In the NBA, in basketball overall, you got to be able to get a bucket. Like, you cannot be a liability on offense anymore. And if you are, you've got to create one. And I think he struggled creating them. He struggled scoring. And on a night where normally you see AD go 8 for 10 and LeBron James 11 for 19, and they both combined for about 50 points, you would think that this team would be competitive. But instead, Russ is 3 for 11, 0 for 1 from 3. It just, you can't, it, you're not creating a case for yourself. Mm. And I do think that, you know, at points, Russ. Russ has been able to be the dog wherever he goes, whether that's OKC, Houston, the Wizards, and now L.A. This is a lot of pressure and expectation, not only playing for Los Angeles, but coming back to your hometown where all your family's there and then trying to acclimate in a season where LeBron was out in the beginning, AD out in the middle, and now you're all back together trying to save the season. I think, what are they, 26 and 29 right now? Trying to make sure they don't end up in a situation where they were in the play-in, and that really hurt them and put them in positioning. But you've got to play and perform at a high level in order to make this push. And I think he hasn't, per se, as, you know, Wendy, you've said, given the requisite evidence for a coach to say, I see why you need to be out there. And lastly, I'll say this. For us, I mean, 
everyone deals with flaws, quote unquote, with your, within your game. Perk, you made a great point about, all right, go work out with the trainer, um, Phil Handy. I mean, everyone knows him in the basketball world. You soak up that type of knowledge. What can you do if you're not knocking down your shot? Everyone knows in basketball, if they're not guarding you, dribble handoff. The next person coming off can be a shooter. Being intentional with those movements to create shots for other people. Screening, you know, that's number one, yeah. too. Uh, focusing on assisting the ball. Like, yeah, if man. you know that's your primary choice, do that. Those are things that you as a veteran have to move the pride to the side and say, if I'm here to win, and everyone, people won't care if you have zero or five points and you win mm. and you have 15 assists. We've seen that. You know, I mean, sorry, I'm just... Uh, uh, no, 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 be real, but... <laughs> be a 40, be a, be a $41 million or 40... What will Russ make? 40? 40 something million dollars. 44. Right now, oh, 44. be a $44 million dollar Alex Caruso. Here. Be be that. Be a guy that, that has zero points, seven steals, and impact in the game that way if you're not being able to score. But here's, here's, here's the thing that I want to point out when I look at Russ. Right now, Russ is being challenged because now he finally has to play basketball. Well, he's been on teams where they're just hooping. Think about it. The Houston Rockets was just That's open true. court and just <laughs> running. It wasn't real, no real That's high true. IQ or having to go with – or having to go with, you know, uh, how can I make this work? Or no, no, it was James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Y'all get up and down and do y'all thing. Same thing with the Wizards. Same thing when we was went with Oklahoma City. But now it comes a point in time where, guess what, Russ? You actually got to play basketball. Right. You actually got to be a basketball player with a basketball IQ in the moment. And Russ is struggling, and Russ need to hold himself accountable of that and not Frank Vogel. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.